and welcome to another episode of the Blood Brothers podcast. Um, tonight we're Seanless because he's having electricity problems, or the whole town <laughs> is. So um, he's wiped out, I'm afraid. But we are joined by Mr. Rob Parker. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I- I'm good. I have power. I can't believe what's going on over at Sean's place. I know. It sounds insane. What is it, four out of the last ten days without power? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how he's surviving. But um, no. sad, he's sad to be missing tonight. Um, but we are joined tonight um, by uh, Stuart McBride. Hello, Stuart. Hello. I'm How glad we're going to. Uh, so uh, we're just going to edit out all the filth at, at the very beginning of this. <laughs> Absolutely, just for, just for clarity. Good. And, Good. and then what's going to happen is when people listen to this, they'll say, "Release the filth." Yes, that's usually what happens. Bonus yes. content. Bonus content. <laughs> yeah. Charge a fortune for it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. We'll split it three ways. <laughs> Release the McBride cut. That's what they'll be, they'll be clamouring on social media. <laughs> Make sure you pronounce that correctly, though. Otherwise, we're right back where we started. <laughs> How are you tonight, Stuart? Are you OK? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, stuffed very quickly full of sausage casserole. So if there's any, any strange noises, that's my end. No, it's the wind. It's the, it's the outside wind and the buzzards. Yes. <laughs> But it's quite apt that you're suffering a blizzard, isn't it? Um, with the sort of content of your new book, um, The Dead of Winter. Nice segue, if I do say so myself. Very smooth, smooth Chris. Yeah, Very well, smooth. good, wasn't it? I was it's like you'd... Radio 4, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Only dirtier. <laughs> well. Mm. Um, and no one's wearing a cardigan. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell our good listeners um, about your new book? Um, well, it's 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 mercifully not too long, which I think is is always nice. I think it's, it's the, just the shortest full length novel I've ever written, um, because unlike Harper Collins, who insisted everything had to be at least one hundred twenty thousand words, Transworld want it to be sort of around about one hundred thousand. And that is hard for me. That is hard because I have been trained to write really big books. So actually whittling something down to as as teeny weeny a size as that uh, has been quite the challenge. Uh, My biggest ever one was 192,000 words. Good gracious me. And I really was thinking, shall I just keep going here? You know, it's not it's not that far till we hit two hundred thousand words. I mean that would be at least that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. I think you'd be entering yeah, no. sort of like surely a rarefied club of people who've written a so you know, a plus two hundred thousand word novel, surely. You don't get it much in crime fiction. No, you really don't, do you? Ah, slackers. That's what it is. <laughs> yes, slackers. Yes. Those fantasy writers are churning it out every other time, aren't they? <laughs> that, that's a proper writer. That's, an, that that's really a writer who is, puts in the it? grift. <laughs> uh, none of your 72,000 words a night, malarkey. <laughs> I'm just checking the the uh, the word count on my current work in progress, which I've just finished. And yeah, we're not, we're not, yeah, I'm going to keep that to myself for the time being. No, no, we're going to know now. How, how... Uh, 82, <laughs> 82. Oh. 82. A wee baby, it's, a, a it's, tiny. It's, it's it's not the size of your book; it's what you do with it. <laughs> Some of us are just more endowed in the page department. What can I say? <laughs> mm. So the dead of winter. <laughs> oh yes, we were talking about that, weren't we? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's a. Uh, it's based on an idea I had years and years, I mean, a long, long time ago, about 13 years ago, uh, when I was writing my one, two, three, four, five, sixth book. Um, and it feels really weird that I've got them lined up beside me. And he says, oh, let me count all my novels. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so I, um, I, was, uh, I was doing some research on a character who had been upended to Aberdeen and previous to that point he had moved from town to town to town to town down in England uh, because he was a notorious sex offender uh, served his time in prison every time they housed him somewhere it would take a few weeks and then the tabloids would find out where he was and set the mob on him 
and he would have to move. And eventually, after this happened so many so many times, he was basically living in a police sta- station. He was living in a cell because there was nowhere else for him to go. And he said to somebody one day, I can't I mean, obviously I can't do the, the accent, but what fun, fancy living boy to say? <laughs> so they stuck him. They said, I have to make sure you don't sell any books in that part of the world. So this, so... <laughs> this guy gets gets stuck on a plane up to Aberdeen. He n- doesn't know anybody here. He's got no relatives or anything like that. But they, they've just gone, right, someone else's problem. Off you go. And off he goes. Uh, and then we have to look after him. And he needs monitored 24-7. So you've got shifts and shifts and shifts, social work, police, um, offender management unit, monitoring all the rest of this stuff, hugely expensive and complicated. And I sat and thought, this can't be this can't be the best way to do it, because this can't be the only guy that you cannot have out living in the public, either for the public safety or for his. But you can't always you can't keep him in prison forever mm. because he's done his time. Wouldn't it be much more sensible if instead of having every force has to look after all these people in lots of different places, you just took all of the people that can't be out in public and you stick them in one place and it would be this little village somewhere remote somewhere that you don't have um, cell phone access or internet access because obviously you, know, you never know what these people are going to get up to so it's some, somewhere safe somewhere secluded and somewhere very self-contained and that sat on my whiteboard for 13 years waiting wow. for a story to actually, you know, it's a lovely setting, but without a story, it's it's no use whatsoever. Uh, and then, oh, as you say, appropriate about the snow. Um, and obviously, I, I don't want to, to swear because that, that might upset some of your, your listeners, but I fucking hate snow. <laughs> I really fucking cocking loathe snow. <laughs> because when, the, when we had that worst winter for over a decade here, it was everybody around to oh, worse we've had for over a decade. Uh, my wife Fiona was off the legs, so she couldn't do anything around the croft. So I was looking after her, looking after all the animals, looking after the horses, all the rest of it, as the wind and snow howls across, and everything is done sideways and slogging. It's like Scott of the Antarctic every bloody morning. And then every afternoon and every mid morning, every lunchtime and after <laughs> dinner, you got to check on the bloody horses. So having, having managed to drag myself through that, I thought, this is, this, is, this has to go in a book. This has to go in a book somewhere because I need the therapeutic <laughs> thing of getting my, my, just my rage and anger at the elements out. So those two, those two things got mashed together. And that's really what the dead of winter is about. It's a stunning premise. Yeah, it's, it's, absolutely it's, stunny. Yeah, I it's, it's a I, nice, concise summary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this, this, I mean, this, it's like um, common sense fantasy in a way, isn't it? You know, like, what do we do with all these people? Well, we just put them, put them over here. Obviously, that's what you should should be doing with them. You know, um, I, I absolutely much more cost it. effective. Mm. Uh, p- piles more cost effective but there's that age old thing isn't there when you put when you make sure that the drama is is in a certain place it distills the drama so finely into an epic dust i feel i don't know whether that's come across right epic dust doesn't feel that epic <laughs> but you know what distilled I mean? epic dust distilled epic dust i should sell it on ebay maybe that's <laughs> like i'm going to see if we can put that in the cover of the book next time when it comes out in paperback <laughs> distilled epic dust rob parker <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> i would die happy i would die happy but um but, so uh, do you find that a lot of your um ideas come from that come from real life or is there like a um i don't know a drawer full of mcbride ideas there that you often dip into i mean in this case you've had this thing on the whiteboard you say for 13 years but um yeah, oh, yeah. But- i mean I, I i rescued my whiteboard from a skip in aberdeen um before i actually came out of the closet as a writer um and it, it has a fringe of post-it notes that run all the way around the outside. Um, they're not layered more than two deep in places, 
but the, the, always buy the extra sticky post-it notes. That's all I see. Everybody say, what's, what's your advice to aspiring authors? If somebody wants to write, what would you tell them? Buy the extra sticky post-it notes because they will stay up there for years. Because the rubbish ones just fall off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, the important have- stuff Stephen King does not cover in on writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if Gorilla Glue came up with a post-it note, you know, now we're talking. Oh, you'd never get it off, though, would you? It'd be amazing. <laughs> you know, yeah. every, every writer's room would get some one post-it note thinner every day. Yes. Until yeah. eventually, it's just a broom closet, nothing but Gorilla Glue post-its. <laughs> we are, we're literally, I don't know, like listeners, we're giving away gold ideas at this point. <laughs> we are. Can I say just what amazingly tidy studies you two have? Ah, that, well, Chris. Well, mine is only this way because um, I am giving up my day job to to do something else, and I'm going to be working from home. So I've I think like you know like nesting, or where I want it to be like perfect, and I'm not the most tidy person in the world, but um, the rest of my You're house is like me. a shit show. But in here, it's like <laughs> exactly how I want it. I put my children aren't allowed to touch my new computer. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm, this room is is my haven. <laughs> are they still at the sticky age? They are very at the sticky age. So yeah, they've been warned off. Off, they're not allowed in. Oh, and, uh, I am. I also have sticky age children. Um, but um, th- this is in a room that they're not allowed to go in. So I've got. Uh, I got. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I've just. This is. Um, oh, it was just. I spent one weekend getting some shelves from Ikea and I never, ever looked back. And I'm a very, very it's happy boy. It's huge as well. Mm. <laughs> Didn't cost a it's, lot as well, which is it's great. It's massive. An electric <laughs> guitar at the back too. There is, yeah, in case uh, t- Twinkling comes along. But I am, um, what's the word? I would say I'm more of a wordsmith. I don't know. You know, that is that remains to be seen as well. But um, <laughs> no, this is a little haven in here where I'm ha- very, very happy. Uh, and oh, there's usually lovely. a bit of sport on that television behind you as well. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Anyway. Mine's is a crap hole, which is why my background is blurred. <laughs> uh, gosh. But with the best whiteboard in the business? Sounds well, with the, with the whiteboard that really needs a clean. It still has Womble Funting Spud Nuggets written on it. <laughs> and I'm sure I've used that in a book somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to try it on my children when I go and put them to bed in a bit. <laughs> Ask them what one of those might be. <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to see with, with a bit of force behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I call them all Womble Spud Nuggets. Or womble Funting Spud Nuggets. You're all Womble fun. Get in bed, you Womble Funting. It sounds very rude. <laughs> it does. It? it really does. Not yeah. one single word in that is rude. No, I just don't think I could say it without wow. either breaking down or... <laughs> Or, or, you know, the, uh, yeah, assuming that rudeness had come out, and I'm sure they'd look at me very funny. Um, my my children have been raised to the point that they think uh, saying, oh, God, is a bad word. So oh. if someone says God, they go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let so, them listen to this episode. I will not. I will not. <laughs> particularly the, the bit about snow. Because <laughs> I said bums at the start. <laughs> uh, well, that I mean, that is, you should see their faces when that one gets rolled out. Good, good grief. <laughs> um, oh, I, can't I had loads of questions lined up, and I can't remember any of them. It's going well, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's been my favourite one of the year so far. Um, <laughs> how, you mentioned at the start about word count. Did you find having to write a shorter book challenging? Um, well, I've, I've sort of changed my process over the years because I, I was getting really... It's not that I love novelty, but there, there does come a point when, you know, there are only so many pickled onion crisps you can eat and, and a different flavour is just calling and beckoning. Ooh, try this instead. Try oh. um, So I started writing screenplays wow. about seven books ago. So my first draft is actually uh, a screenplay. So I bought myself a copy of Final Draft and... All the action and all the dialogue goes in, uh, partially because I find it much less painful to edit. Because when people want a structural 
want to make, make a structural change, or I think it's, it's fucking plug and play, yet things can move around. It's once the narrative goes in and everything is threaded together, shifting stuff is just a nightmare. Mm. I'm like, oh, can we move this scene to the to, to about two thirds of the way through? No, because then everything has to be unpicked and go back through again. Yeah, I, I think I lie awake frightened about those emails, to be honest. <laughs> you know, like, w- would you like to do it? Like, no, please. This Because it, it's like a deck of cards, isn't it? And moving yeah. a fundamental one and then trying to reinsert it somewhere else. Oh, gosh. It's frightening. Yeah. Well, I think, I think that, that shows that you actually give a toss about your narrative. Yes, yes. I, I can't remember who it was that was, uh, who said, oh, I, I threw away two-thirds of my book and I did it without even thinking twice. <laughs> What was wrong with the book that you wrote that you didn't have anything invested in two thirds of it that you would just go, huh, okay, maybe you need to go. Off you go into the, into the mist, little book. I will send you off to live on a farm. But it should at least hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, um, I mean, I, this goes back to process as well and the, how we've all got different ones, I suppose, you know. And um, I, are you, do you have a word count a day that you aim for? Or is it just uh, you, is it? See how it goes? I, it kind of gets shorter the longer I do this. Really? Um, I, I, I do so much more unwriting than I do <laughs> writing. Oh, uh, when, when I used to work full time, I would do 3,000 words a night. When you um, were f- working uh, full time? Yeah, I would come home <laughs> from work and that would, that would be my hobby. That's what I did. I sat down yes, and I yes. 3,000 words. Uh, and, and at the weekend, it would be 3,000 words a day and that would be fine. Nowadays, if I can get actual one and a half thousand on a page in a, in a whole day, that's all oh, oh, the feeling, the feeling of success that that gives me. Oh, <laughs> even better if I sort of look at them the next day and don't say delete three quarters of them. <laughs> or send it to live on a farm. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what we do. That's what we do books. We, we send the words off to live on a farm. <laughs> We so, definitely um, don't drag them behind the shed and press delete. We definitely <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so, so, how does using Final Draft like? Can you explain that sort of how the process changed them? Uh, well, Final Draft's the industry standard for screenwriting, mm. so it was, uh, and, and the idea is not to get them produced as films or TV shows or anything like that. It's just I quite liked it. I thought it would be, be something very different. It was something fun. Um, I've always been quite a visual writer, so it seemed it seems sort of fairly straightforward uh, to me that that would be a, a reasonable step to take. Uh, and and also, I do like having sections in my book. Um, I think it's been a long time since I've written a book that just starts at the start and just vroom, 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 through to the end. I like having this is one chunk, this is another chunk. There's another thing. And having little titles and stuff at the, the beginning mm. of little bits to set the tone and scene. So it really fits in well with that because um, normally uh, something like the, uh, the Blood Road, I think, was six episodes long. Uh, six, hour, six hour long episodes. Oh. Whereas um, The Dead of Winter was four. And uh, I think what was it? I think Now We Are Dead was the first one I ever did it with. Uh, my my sh- my shortest ever novel at ninety two thousand words, uh, and that was, that was three that episodes. Was, wow, wow! Hmm. I, I I must admit, um, I I love having a tinker with Final Draft. You know, just playing with it. I've never. I'd love one day to write for the screen. Um, I used to write a lot of terrible scripts. Um, earlier on in my life, and I honestly think they helped me a lot. You know, with um brevity. And with uh, visual style and getting to know around, because I wrote a lot of terrible action films that I hoped would star Jean Claude Van Damme. Um, so- <laughs> I hope not anymore, because he's turned out to be a right prick. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, is it Steven Seagal? I'm thinking. Of? Yes, I was going to say. Uh, do you mean the, sorry, the- Jean Damme? Sorry, Jean. <laughs> my apologies. Sorry, I Jean- hold my hand up to that. Jean-Claude, yes. No, Jean Claude still does the splits on request on adverts and stuff like does that. He? <laughs> it's it's Gal who's the puppet, uh, the Putin's puppet now. Um, yeah, he looks like a yeah. sausage that's been filled with worms now. I think that <laughs> well, that sort of Pavarotti black dyed hair on the top, the beard. There's a you're kidding, no one, mate. <laughs> that's such a great description. That goes <laughs> in your next book. Yes. Uh, 
Gosh, I'm just right. hoping John Van, Van, John Claude Van Damme doesn't come around looking for me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because we set the record straight. That he's he's lovely, okay. lovely. Um, D- but it did. It was such a lovely process. I really enjoyed using Final Draft, and every now and then I dip back in just to have a little tinker with it, a little bit of a play. Um, and it does. It sort of refreshes. Um, I don't know. It gets me back to a baseline. I think a little bit. You know, where I don't have to um, feel like I, you know, have to be too writerly. If you know what I mean. I don't know whether I've described that right, but I don't yeah, know. it's just it's a way of focusing on slightly different aspect of the craft yeah. without wanting to seem far too masturbatory um, <laughs> with, with, a, with a craft talk. But it, it, it does. It's, it's 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 a nice way to just go right. Well, you can't have exposition in the narrative because there is no narrative. People have to be able to see things happening. You have to dramatise stuff. Um, or you have to have somebody stand there and go, well, as you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And that should be really obvious when you're doing it in that kind of format. Do you see the... I mean, you're talking about books split into scenes. Do you see it quite um, like filmic in your head? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm very much one of those... Right. Let's just cl- cl- close my eyes. What's it like to be there? Mm. Kind of guys. Where do things fit? Where do things go? I draw little maps. Um, oh, ooh, yeah. Oh, that, ooh, one of the sexiest things for this book, for the dead of winter. We've got tea towels. Oh, yes. We have tea towels. I should have, I would have brought one through. I've got them in the kitchen um, to show you. But yeah, yeah, as, as a promotional thing. A promotional tea towel. We did tea towels. It's so cool because it's got a little. Uh, shall I, are you you guys okay for for a second? Yeah, this is very professional of me to leave leave a Please live don't recording. Please don't worry, I, I, Chris. That is the, like so. Tea towels. That will be one of the most unique marketing sort yeah. of ploys I've come across. I think in this. Yeah, yeah. I because I, I think as and I mean I've only ever sort of been here for like what maybe three years now and as a reader before it but it is getting more like that isn't it? like where like cool things yeah I, I saw mike craven got a proof today from someone and he got chocolate with it chocolate's always a winner oh it was it was from um richard armitage right. oh, it was yes yeah oh here he is he's is back this... with his tea tile is he oh yes here we go oh so... yes oh Oh no! Oh no! It's, it's blurring. <laughs> I'm it. blurred. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this. One. I am so professional with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh wow! That is yes. incredibly cool. Uh, right. How do you take a screenshot? Because this would be nice to show people, wouldn't it? Rob, Let you're me, you're good at technology. I'll do it. Stuff, I'll get you? it done. Uh, let's do Chris. If we do our faces like appropriately excited. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> But you can see it's got a little key down at the bottom. It has. Ah, oh, this is class. Yeah, hey, that's it lets you know so, all, so good. all the different businesses are and where they where they are. And oh, that oh. Is the, and is, are those for for sale? Uh, what do I think? Ha! Now I can sit down again <laughs> without exposing the horror that is my study. <laughs> how oh, how do they? Uh, no, no, they're not. They're not for sale. But. How cool is that, though? That, that yeah, is, it is cool. That's, when you said a tea towel, I was thinking it could either be the cover on a tea towel or mm. it'd be like one of those great sort of tourist tea towels that you get when you went to the Norfolk Broads or something like that, or, you know, like a Roman base. And it's exactly that. It's so ace. I love it. It is class. But, yeah. We I mean, think how much better um, something like Silence of the Lambs would have done if they'd had a promotional tea towel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with a map of the basement on, you know, <laughs> the end of the house. Lucian. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Chris, did we have we had some questions from the online ether, didn't we? We, we had, yeah, we had two very... Um, there was one that was asked a lot, and I'm sure you've been asked this billions of times now do you think you know what it might be i'm guessing i'm guessing and i think then i think the answer will be 2025 but there we go let's let's see <laughs> let's um are there going to be any more logan books yes Stuart wins <laughs> i didn't spend all that time on celebrity mastermind for nothing oh, well, we haven't <laughs> even got to that yet <laughs> uh, yeah yeah well uh, 2025 is the 20th anniversary of cold granite 
Amazing. So, yeah, I've, I've already, although I'm working on next year's book at the moment, I have ideas and some reference photographs already for, for what's going to happen, at least partially, uh, with when Logan comes back. Absolutely amazing. And was it, was it just a case of getting a, or like trying a different character out? And, and obviously it's gone well, but like, why did he, why did he go to the side for a little while? Um, I don't know about you guys, but you know, when you've got house guests yeah. and after three days, you want to strangle them. <laughs> yes. I, you know, having lived with Logan almost nonstop, I think for about 12 years, it was just, please go live somewhere else just for a little bit. Um, so, so yeah, it was just to give me a bit of me, a bit of a break from him and him, a lovely big break for me. Uh, yeah. cause he gets older in real time. So in this time that I've not been writing about him, nobody has been torturing him. Yeah. So he's, he's, a bit we, we left him, uh, his girlfriend was pregnant. Um, his life was in a nice place. Everybody seemed to be happy and that's what he's had for, for several years now. And it's all about to go horribly wrong. Oh, oh dear. Our, our listeners are going to be very happy people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very what a rotten bunch of sods just thinking, oh, I can't, just can't wait for him to get tortured again and tormented <laughs> and horrible things to happen to him. <laughs> um, would you like to play a game before we ask our second question? It's not strip poker again, is it? <laughs> again? Not this time. That, yeah. That starts at nine, which is our cutoff point. Because um, there were some interesting tattoos on show. <laughs> I particularly liked your Jessica Fletcher, Rob. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, I, I don't I did... think she should have been doing that with Columbo. <laughs> it's unhygienic, <laughs> apart from anything else. <laughs> and imagining, fit, imagine fitting all that on one butt cheek as well. You know, <laughs> it was it was what, what was happening across the divide was was even worse. <laughs> I will rescue this. Um our, <laughs> our um our game is called the one Everybody at home now is, is picturing the Great Divide though. <laughs> Don't picture it, please. Don't picture it. That could be the next Logan McRae book title. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Great Divide. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> what an epic story that would be. Yes. Uh, what was it? Epic Dust? Something, something epic dust. Distilled epic dust. Distilled epic dust, the great divide. All <laughs> um, oh, right. The game, the game, the, the game. game. So oh, um, our game is called One Star Superstar. And what we've done is we've had a look at someone who's given you a one star review. And we've looked at what else they've reviewed. And you just have to guess whether they're one star or five star review. <laughs> okay, and uh, your one. This isn't is... a sock puppet one, is it? <laughs> no, oh, no, I don't know. No, no, I have not picked. Yeah, sock well, I think we we had had that big sock puppet. Um, we did, yes, for a go a few years ago. Yes, I don't. It won't. It won't intentionally have been done. Um, but I can't speak. Oh, exciting! See, a little extra edge of jeopardy now. Yeah. Okay. Well, your one star review, we never read them out um, because that would be cruel, but there was a hilarious bit in yours that I'm going to read um, one little bit off, if you don't mind. Um, she was saying, or well, MH, I don't know who it is, but said, um, I, you've got quite a lot of descriptions of stuff in your books, and you even described a bunch of grapes as gangrenous hemorrhoids. <laughs> and that is just part of my favourite review ever, and... <laughs> I mean, what's wrong it's with fair that? Enough. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's <laughs> who who here cannot see those grapes? <laughs> <laughs> it's not something I'm troubling with, you know. That, that do, 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 you, do you think you'd want to eat them? Probably not. No. And I would imagine neither would the point of view character at the time. So I mean, I think that's a, 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 I, a fairly realistic. I, yeah, I, I thought like the power of words and <laughs> fair play. So this person has reviewed some other stuff as well. Um, so first of all, they've got um, a rotating, self-healing cutting mat for craft. You know, like you put under stuff to cut, and it. Oh, like, I have one. 
They, oh, oh they one of those very things just behind me. Ah, what, it, does uh, it rotate and self heal like this one? It doesn't rotate and self heal. Well, I think that means you can turn it over. Oh, right. Ah, there we go. I, <laughs> I, I, it doesn't actually spiral. You just oh, I rotated it. Like yes, I was like this rotisserie. Look, I've turned it around again. <laughs> I'm a genius. I had images of it like after you've done a session, like spinning around, like you know, like a Pokemon might, and healing as it goes. And yes, it's yeah, brand yeah. New. Um, sadly, not. <laughs> Stuart's ruined that for us. Um, so, is the self-healing cutting mat a one star or a five star? Well, I'm guessing it probably doesn't feature hemorrhoids, unless you know they really can't get an appointment with their their NHS practitioner, because you don't want to be buying a cutting mat for that. Uh, might be a pair of scissors, I think. That would be, or, or, or the things you do for or toenail clippers for dogs. That would do it. So I'm, I'm guessing probably a five star. You think a five star? Okay, they're happy with their cutting mat, Rob. I'm going to go with uh, one star. Um, just, uh, well, <laughs> for the interests of competition, I'll go with one star on Better this play. occasion. But I did have I did have strong thoughts as to the self-healing nature of this. I did she... I know this is this will be why it's a one star. It didn't self-heal because... Or rotate. She had to do that bit herself. <laughs> yes! <laughs> absolutely furious that this thing did not magically fix itself and spin. Yeah. Well, it is a one star, and <gasps> it's one star because it arrived broken, <laughs> which it, is perfect. It, it hadn't, it, if she'd left it long enough, it would heal itself. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it, clues in the description, for God's sake. <laughs> it come down, it'd just be spinning wildly, immaculate, perfect. Yeah. I am damaged, master. I'm damaged. <laughs> Let me spin. <laughs> Anyway, oh man! My favourite ever one star review uh, <laughs> is for Le Mort de Le Mort de Cos is the book. It's uh, for sale on Amazon.co.uk. Even though it says in the description it is actually the French translation, <laughs> hence the fact it's got a French fucking title, <laughs> Le Mort de Cos. And there's this row of, ref of reviews of it of people going, "I bought this book." It's in French. <laughs> I don't read French. One star. How is that my fault? <laughs> I, I, I'm so sorry. I adore that kind of review. Yeah. It, 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 it betrays so much. I, I absolutely love it. I, I prefer that to this week I got. I really love this book. It was brilliant. I, I can't wait to read the next one. Three stars. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't, uh, don't want you to get a big head there. I know what more can a person do. I... <laughs> well, they were probably aiming for five, but then got just the mind got fixated on the Great Divide, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. They were just focusing on. It was, oh, it's, it's just one star, one one big one, one big big one big big brown star. But I'm not going to click on it. No, no, that's it. no, five star, five star. No, oh, oh, three, three. I'll just go three. Oh, now I must wash my mind with bleach. <laughs> I can't even remember what it is. I rated it. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, is there a second? There is. Chris? There well, is a second. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. I probably went too slightly too far for that. I, I do. I do apologise. I do apologise. <laughs> Rob, Rob, Chris, I have come on and I have just besmirched your show. <laughs> um, it's... I, I think that it has been besmirched many times before, so uh, usually by us. So it's, it's absolutely so welcome. Yeah, it's good that the guests do. <laughs> um, the the second item is um, a guard dog sensor, so that if somebody comes to your door. It makes the sound of guard dogs when you don't oh. have a, an actual guard dog to sort of scare people off. Is this the same person who... Yeah. It is. Same person. So one right. star or five star for the guard dog noise maker. <laughs> I'm going to go... I'm, I'm, well, obviously this is a, a stitch-up because I think Rob's played this before. But I'm going to go <laughs> one star. I'm going to go one star because I, I, I don't think it's going mean, to... You would have to put the speaker... Inside, by the front door, but round about knee level, in yes. order for it to yeah. have any sort of effect. Wouldn't you? If it's if it's coming from up here, <laughs> 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 that 
trash. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go the... again in the interest competition. I'm going to go five simply because I think this person, if they don't like, if they're going to review like that uh, and they're going to um, just so scandalously overlook magnificent wordplay as earlier in the case of Stuart's book, mm. I think that only the most off the wall, stupid items like an electronic car dog <laughs> might make this person happy. So five stars. Yeah. That's a... <laughs> Bear in mind, they are going to be very unhappy at this point anyway because they have self-removed their own hemorrhoids <laughs> on the cutting mat. So, you know, that's probably why they need the door, but they can't get to the door very quickly because there's going to be quite a lot of waddling yeah. going on just because that's going to sting. That's going to sting. <laughs> self-removed. <laughs> oh yeah, if, only, if only we did episode titles. Yes, I know, I know. Maybe this could be the first one we do. <laughs> yeah, I think it's garnered that accolade. Um, it Don't listen one to this one. <laughs> it's filthy. <laughs> um, the guard dog noisemaker did get one star. Yes. Oh, well done. Wow. And they said, I want a guard dog to sound vicious and ready to attack in order to deter burglars. This recording sounds like like just that, a recording of various types of barks. Burglars are going to laugh this one off. <laughs> just get an alarm, or you know, don't, yeah. don't put your life in the hands of a, <laughs> of a pretend or get guard. a real dog. You, I, you've got to admire the, the chutzpah of whoever has made that product, though. And gone, you really do, yeah. <laughs> first, we will start with Alsatian. Alsatian make with the barking. <laughs> <laughs> now the Chihuahua. We will blend this all together. It will be very scary for the burglars. <laughs> oh, I would not burn in this house. I would run, run. Can I just say, your your range of accents is fantastic. What so far has been two? <laughs> and n- neither are places oh. I will ever get invited to again. <laughs> it is. Oh gosh! Um, oh, well, that's it. It's a draw. It's so a well draw. Done. Well, we we share the spoils of victory. Well played. Well, well played, played, sir. Well played. And um, we usually at this point ask what you've been reading. What have you been reading at the moment, Stuart? Um, I have been. I've been going through a bit of a fallow patch on the reading front. I've started quite a few books and then gone. Nope. Don't think I'm going to be progressing with this one any longer. Let's see what the next one's like. Um. I've got a couple lined up that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, have you ever read any Adrian Highland? Oh, I'm not, no. I don't think I have, actually. I'm going to do a live, um, bit of live Googling while I'm at it here. Uh, his, um, his Diamond Dove was... I enjoyed the book so much that I tracked him down on the internet and subjected him to a terribly unprofessional interview. <laughs> uh, and then I think I got, I got Shots Magazine to publish it. Because uh, I, I loved the book so much. Now, I, eventually, when I was on tour over there uh, in Australia, stayed with him and his family for a couple of days in the oh. outback. Well, it's not the full outback; it's the bush um, near Melbourne. Yeah, and he's got a he's got a book out called uh, Canticle Creek at the moment. So that's that's next up on my nightstand, and I'm looking forward to getting into that one. Excellent. Mm. I I just uh, so Diamond Dove. Did you say Diamond Dove was the one that you Diamond read? Dove? Diamond of Brilliant. No, I'm just adding... Oh, wholeheartedly the... recommend it. Brilliant. Lovely, lovely voice. Fabulous, fabulous stuff. Um, Chris, what about you? What are you reading at the moment? Well, um, I was very lucky to get sent an early copy of Black Fell by Mary Hanna. Oh, um, wow. Cool. Quite in June, and I've got about 40 pages left. So I am um, almost finished that, and it is incredible. And then at Bay Tales this weekend, I managed to get um, Alex North had his new one on sale for like, you know, a couple of weeks early. So oh. I've got that, the Half Burnt House, I think it's called. Um, and his panel was class and the way he talked about it um, really made me excited. So, I mean, there's thousands He's of... He's probably books. serious though. I uh, is. And it was all about... Uh, th- he talked about the sort of philosophy of the book and it just made it sound really interesting. So um, very much looking forward to that. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that next time. Talking about philosophy. Philosophy. <laughs> philosophy v hemorrhoids. Uh, you know, who, this episode could 
I, I know which goal. one I prefer discussing. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> philosophical hemorrhoid. <laughs> wow, it's not a good crisis. nickname, though, is it? <laughs> it sounds like a band name. <laughs> we are the philosophical hemorrhoids. <laughs> Definitely punk. This is our latest one. South Healy cutting mat. <laughs> I'm knocking things off my shelf. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sure I was meant to do this one seriously as well. Oh, it's almost <laughs> going to tell us off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word. Um, so uh, I'm reading <laughs> just as I try to. <laughs> wrangle this back uh, into our usual structure uh i'm reading um cj box whenever he comes out and you comes out with a new one he's the uh, writer who uh, lives in wyoming um whenever he comes out with a new one uh it's like christmas day in my house because i love being transported to his uh wyoming wilderness uh where his game re- game warden joe pickett is always solving bad guys uh 23 books 24 books i think one of the other um, this one in the series, and I just flipping love it. It's just, it's like a warm jumper that you've had for years gets delivered in late February, early March every year. And it's like, oh, here we go. Oh, I just love it. So uh, Stormwatch is the new one. Dependably brilliant. It's just super. Oh, really very enjoy. nice. Yeah. And yeah, cool. Um, the last reader question, which I thought was really interesting, and um, it's from Lauren North, fantastic author. Um you are not on social media, um, and it's. I mean, we're in the day and age where it feels like you have to be to make connections and things like that. But obviously, your books huge. Like your series continue to get. You know, they're massive, and you do it without a social media presence. And I mean, that was obviously a conscious decision that you took. Um, has it? Has it changed? how you view the business or how you write your books or, or whatever? Um, I think it's probably slightly healthier mm. uh, because I am removed from that that, that whole sort of, oh, soon someone else is doing, doing so well. Why, don't I, why, why haven't I won an award for so long? <laughs> kind of stuff. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's not that sort of... But, uh, but this, this is a, a huge problem with social media is people actually... No, nobody's living their real life on social media. They're living mm. what they hope will be the best presentation of themselves all mm. the time. Um, and eventually I, I got to the point where I, I really couldn't face going on every day being cheery and happy and making light of things when that, that just wasn't wasn't where I was at that point. Um, so, uh, I decided to step, step away from it and I haven't really missed it, to be honest. Um, it used to be lovely making contact with people, but obviously, you know, given the pandemic and everything else, nobody's making contact with anybody, uh, for ages and ages. Uh, and I also have, to, I do have to say that the, the, the lovely people at Transworld, um, Julia runs my Facebook page. So there, there is a there is a Facebook page and there's engagement through that. I do a newsletter that goes out. Be sure to subscribe now on my website, which is full of rambling nonsense, but but no naughty words. Is that thanks to Julia? Have, Except she... for bum. <laughs> Except bum. <laughs> oh, and sometimes poo head. <laughs> my kids would be in absolute heaven. Like, can you get a load of the stuff this guy said? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh dear! And so, how, how, have you found it like? Has it changed your writing? Because you do get sucked into spending more time than is healthy or wanted. Has it? Has it changed your writing day? Like, do you write more, or how, how has it changed that? Well, I, I certainly get up and move around a lot more. Yeah, rather than just sort of sitting and and scrolling for a bit. Yeah, yeah if, I, if there's something I need to think about. I will go for a little walk around the house or stomp through the snow or the mud, depending on what the weather's like at the time, rather than just sitting and, and scrolling and, and seeing what's happening in Albuquerque and <laughs> other places that Bugs Bunny used to go to. <laughs> he was always going there, wasn't he? <laughs> he was, and he never took the turn. 
never took the correct turn when he got to Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> this before GPS, you see. Yes, this is it. This is it. <laughs> I love how how invested you are, Rob. Like, no, I know. Really I really didn't I, take that turn. Did did. No, no, it's always. Um, and it was always Albuquerque. Well, <laughs> that's Sorry. how you know he's a native. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, Stuart, my cheeks hurt, and I do. You know, uh, as is often commented, I have quite the cheeks. And they hurt. Second, well, we've discussed your cheeks earlier. No, no, let's not go down that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I have Pert had... Pert and firm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I have had a fabulous time having a chat with you tonight. Yeah. Uh, thank great. you so, so very much. Um, what, can I just ask us one last question? What is coming next for you? After got the dead of winter, what's next? Is there anything you can tell us? Well, um... It's my final standalone for this contract. Um, it is set in Old Castle. It has. Uh, I, I'm trying something a bit different with protagonist and um, point of view character uh, this time. I, th I thought for, for Dead of Winter is, is basically my take on a cozy. So it's that it, it's like midsummer. Little, little, it's a little village community. There's all the little, well, then it was, a good, it was a lot of fun playing with the tropes of that kind of story for that book. Uh, and this one, I'm moving more into the normally my point of view character is the protagonist, but this time my point of view character is not. He works for the protagonist. So it's more of a sort of, uh, sort of Poirot and Hastings kind of vibe, only with. A slightly more homicidal hemorrhoid bend. Which is what the people want. Yeah, give the people what they want. <laughs> well, except for one person. For everyone, oh, well, yes. that person, no, there's 10 that they're calling out for it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Going, but I love my dog barking. <laughs> Your bell. And my self, my self heating, self heat, self heating, self, self healing revolt. Oh, we've been. See, this is why this kind of conversation is meant to happen in a pub. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Well, we, I hope when we're out and about on the road, I hope we see you for a beer at some point, Stuart. That would be splendid. That would be absolutely lovely. <laughs> yes. Oh, long, long may those days return. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. And thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. And all the very best with the dead of winter. Thank you very much. That's actually genuinely lovely to speak to a pair of you. Yeah, it's, it's nice been to really actually, cool. Nice to actually have some fun doing these things. Ah, oh, that's cool, man. Thank you yeah, so much. Really appreciate, appreciate it. And we'll um, see you soon. Cheers, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.